Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight, and thank you to, for, uh, to Matches Fashion for hosting us. It's uh, any excuse to come to London, but this is a particularly grand one. This is, for me, this is, I suppose, Buckingham Palace. Look who's here <laughs> to talk to tonight. Um, <laughs> Nikki, I, this, Nikki I, I've known for not well enough, but known for a few decades, and it's always been a great inspiration to me. Ben is a new friend who I follow on what I like to call the Instagram. It's just like sounds Victorian if I say it like that. <laughs> and this is my great uh, teacher. Uh, we worked together for a couple of years back in the United States, and Carolina is an exquisite uh, uh, shelter magazine editor who now has uh, is doing wonderful things in the tabletop arena. <laughs> um, I wanted to tell you before we get into the conversation a little bit about how this book came about. Um, I started at Fiden and four and a half years ago to help, well, a couple of things. One is to help it, Fiden has quite a presence in the, in the UK, but to help it grow a little bit in the United States and also to do fashion and interior design books. And when I looked at um, some of the the best, we hadn't done a lot of decorating books, but when I looked at the art book, if you know that one, or the fashion book, I thought it's a legacy project, as we call it in branding. <laughs> um, we should do the, we should do interior designers, and then the next thing that happened was I tried to find someone to write the book, and I ended up being asked to participate. And what it consisted of was I had been working, I'd worked at Vogue and the New York Times and House and Garden, I always forget to mention House and Garden for some reason, and uh, for a couple of years, and. And I had always heard, you know, I, in my head, was not, what, a lot of books are editors' choices, what editors love. I wanted this to be what people talk about when they talk about interior design um, around the world. What are the rooms that people talk about? And so I did a list, and then we asked about uh, th three dozen people to provide names, and we came up with the book that you'll, you'll see if you get one at the end of the day. And my inspirations were people like, I, when I was young, I knew Billy Baldwin and I knew Mrs. Vreeland a little bit because I knew Sasha Vreeland and, and Nikki was an, is an inspiration and Albert Hadley and all these voices. And I mean, and then when I would do sit, shoots, photo shoots, um, I remember three days with someone named Tom Ford and a photographer named uh, Todd Eberly fighting over what's in and what's out and what's in and what's out. I had a lot of voices in my head. But tonight, I'd like to ask you guys, when you started out, what were your inspirations? What were the earliest inspirations, whether it was a room or a person or something you read? Nikki, what was your earliest inspirations that would, might, would lead you towards your career? Well, I'm not sure that things inspired me quite so much as people. I mean, I just wandered around the world and saw things I loved and sort of stored them up and then sort of used them to become a do the only thing, I, I wasn't very much good at anything else, so I started doing decoration. <laughs> but uh, for say, the person who inspired me most, really, the person uh, all my life since 17 at Eton is Min Hogg, oh. who I hope is here. She is here. <laughs> and she, she, she and I, she, we, we, we saw things together, she stored them up, I stored them up, she did it in interiors, starting the greatest magazine of interior de decoration there's ever been. And it's all due to her that we're here, probably, I may say. She revived the whole thing. And, and I did it as, as, as my work. Mm -hmm. Understood. And Carolina, you, I. I have to say the same thing. For me, um, World of Interiors, when I f first bought it in 1983, was the biggest revelation. I, it taught us to look at houses in a completely different way. Yeah. It was an eye opener. I do, I, that's my biggest biggest influence, I will say, is Min Hogg and, and World of Interiors. And Ben? <laughs> Good answer. Min Hogg is my name. <laughs> it is actually basically true, <laughs> as she knows. Uh, for me, um, I was always on a sort of strange um, trajectory between sorts of architecture and interiors, and I think I still am. And I remember... Um, specifically sort of that famous Colfax and Fowler book published by, was it Chester Jones back in the sort of mid 80s? I think I found in a little bookshop uh, in the little hometown where I lived in Dorset, um, Min's book, not the magazine so much as the book yeah. of yeah. the world of interiors, yeah. 
still referred to kind of weekly in my office because it's such an edit. Um, and there was a sort of, I, I've always been interested in the relationship between the past and today. And I think that's, that's, that's a big theme in my architecture as well. And there's a, the, there were sort of amazing moments in both of those two books, which when I was very young, for, uh, 12, 13, when I bought them, um, which have sort of resonated ever since. I think people think people once said inspired one too in yeah. a kind of way. Nancy Lax was saying, think of your corners first. It's an incredibly oh. important thing to do in a room, otherwise you're left with the, you know, blank spaces and ceilings. And she also said, to make a room look quiet, you have to complicate everything. You can't have That's one thing great. left uncomplicated. It's so true. Oh, that is great. Nikki, how did you become an interior designer? Because I'd bought the ranch in Arizona and was a cowboy, and people liked the materials I'd done there. And then I had my thing in Los Angeles, people liked that. Then I came back here and I thought, oh, what the fuck am I going to do? Right. And the only thing I thought, well, rooms, why not? Yeah. So I did it. Um, Carolina, you, how did you get started as a magazine editor? No, by chance, completely. I mean, I, I was working at um, Sotheby's, mm -hmm. and then, you know, all of a sudden I got offered this job um, at House and Garden, and that was it, and that's where we met. American so, uh, American House and Garden, yeah, yeah. long time ago. Yeah. But it's funny, you know, we, I guess because I've worked on magazines, how important was a mag, compared to fa fashion, you know, fashion photography is beautiful, and one of the things doing this book, doing Fiden's Book of Interiors, um, I realized how important and how under, misunderstood, perhaps, shelter, house photography, interior photography is. Yeah. And yeah. how important has it, has it been to you all in your, in your careers? To, and, and where do you think it will go, be going in the yeah, future? In With way. Pinterest, which I was mean, my enemy, photo, researching this book. Photographs often last longer than the rooms. Yeah. You know, think of that amazing blue drawing room at Chatsworth, no, only in images, or Nancy Lancaster's. <laughs> Butter yellow. Or butter or yellow or at Colfax. No, I named, sort of I, no, I named it. I called it the butter yellow in that article I wrote for Min on it. And, and she fine. rang me up and said, I don't speak in that common southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the photographs are almost more permanent than, I mean, that's the thing about decoration. It's impermanent. So photographs are incredibly important. Mm. Caroline, what was it like to, what made a good um, interiors photograph? I mean, I, I'm the wrong person to ask because every time they wanted a good picture for the magazine, it was something you? I didn't like. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I, you know, you either saw too much or not enough, and mm -hmm. it was always the wrong edit. I think the sense of romance I thought was lost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a while ago. Yeah. And um, by wanting to document every corner of a room, which mm. you don't necessarily need to see, you no, know, the kitchen the sink and the... Yeah. 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 And also people didn't do details in those days, did they? Didn't yeah. do sort of close-ups no. and things, no. which, which, which and actually are fascinating now. The, the magic and the wonder of a room, and now I, I feel that's kind of lost. Now it's too literal, so you can go it shop, you can shop the picture. Yeah. I think there's a... That's so literally, you can shop the picture. Literally shop. Most of the magazines, they wanted people in them. But AD always Obviously, wanted the, the people thing. in them, which was a nightmare. Jumping up they picked yeah. people who ruined the picture. Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that was always the big debate was what was the difference between Architectural Digest and House and Garden when we worked there was House and Garden had a person in the room and AD didn't yeah. back then. It brings us to this idea of uh, Carolina has an art essay in the book on the conundrum of good taste and bad taste. And there she quotes um, Leslie Blanche. Did I say that okay? Yeah, um, I'm American. You all have accents, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and and she said, you know, nothing has been harder on decorating than the uh, decorating pundits. You know, people giving rules and rules and rules. And this, and in America at least, there's a great fear. You know, it's keeping up with the Joneses. And you know, if I have good taste or bad taste, I want you to think I have good taste, and that we we have to worry about it. Now, is there such a thing as good taste or bad taste? Mm. No, there is. I mean, pe people have their own taste, don't they? What I think is there's that sort of taste that's so kind of perfect in a way that it hits you on the head like a bulldozer you want to get out. Or there's insipid taste, yes, which yes, is worse. Exactly. But there's quite, a, quite nice things about bad taste yep. sometimes. Mm. I mean, the, the Italian for taste is gusto. 
And I like a bit of gusto in a room. I like something that gives you a biff on the nose when you walk in, a sort of panache. smile, panache. <laughs> Um, I mean, b b boring taste is bad taste, really. I mean, it ends up by being, I think, don't you? Mm -hmm. Be brave, Absolutely. break the rules. And yeah. how do you, I mean, if you're, if you're terrified to break a rule, how do you break a rule? You let you... Get a good decorator. It's going to break the <laughs> yes. rules for you. Well, well, paint everything white, I'm done with it. You know. <laughs> Chippendale painted white, looks wonderful. <laughs> what is the role it's of the decorator, then? It's tricky, though, that whole question of the good taste, bad taste thing, because... The problem with very good taste um, is that it can quite quickly become um, so boring that it's bad taste. It becomes, I'm, I'm getting nervous about, I won't mention any names on film, but there's a certain fireplace company based on the Pimlico Road, <laughs> we may know. And I was um, sort of in one of my clients' houses, uh, kind of looking at yet another marble all fireplace made in China, made in China nothing wrong with made in yeah. China. <laughs> and you know, the adverts in every month's World of Interiors with the sort of pale gray walls and the antique dealer's armchair, and I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and there's a moment where um, you know, when you've, uh, and it's an amazing look. Uh, it's the English country house look, and it's been revived by, by various people, including me. Um, and then it gets to a point where you're like, I can't look at another globe lantern. Like, I can't look at them anymore. Uh, um, because they've become so ubiquitous yes. that um, it, it's sort of the... Um, but other people love them. Well, exactly. Yeah, the so avocado bathroom yeah. is oh, the... Of the, of the, the it was. They're now back in. <laughs> exactly. Like, so who's to more. say? And that, that, and that sort of pale blue baths. Oh, uh, that's wonderful. old hat that that's yeah. back in, Nicky. Like we're Love them. Doing pale blue bathrooms and pale pink bathrooms the no, whole time. No, baths. Baths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the and baths the and the yeah, loo. Yeah. That one sort of sky yeah. blue. They were so beautiful. Yeah, and we currently, in my office, have a small ceramic scale model of a, of a toilet. Is that good taste or bad taste, Nikki? Well, uh, what, what's, what's the um, <laughs> word on the tea towel? Uh, anyway, and um, they won't, and they say, why, why are you not handing it out as a tile sample? And they say, because everybody wants tiles, but we don't make tiles, we just make loos. So I've got this pale blue loo, because Wonderful. we're doing pale blue loos again. They're they're back in. Like the Avocado right, ones are not quite. The pink ones are back in. Yeah. yeah. So there's a yeah. whole big. The, the, you I can't know. really define. It's well, it's I'm a very to troubling zone to go. Um, do you have a questionnaire that you give, Nikki? Do you have a questionnaire that you give a new client if someone if I called you up and we had never met, would you ask? Oh, would you know? You would you would just say no? No, I go I go and see them all. And yeah, don't spend a weekend or. Well, just half an hour to begin with. And yeah. see how they are. Yeah. 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 No questionnaires. Yeah. No questionnaires. That would you be quite off the thing. You don't ask them what their favorite movie is or what they like to eat. They find that out in a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to see the building though? Like if you like, you need to s see it. You need to see it, or you need to get a. Well, suppose get you a, haven't got it yet. Then. Then. <laughs> no, you have to like the client <laughs> to do whatever. You've got to you like do. the building, you've got to like the client. But it's, That's the two you've got to like the two things. They basically, I would think you're buying yeah, an apartment. Yeah, you've yeah. yeah. got to like the doing. If they have no idea what they want, then well, it's the, easy for you. Then, then you just, just go what, for what, it. That's what one longs for in life, if you have no idea what they want. Best plan possible. How often does it happen when someone says, here, do this? Even if they do know what they want, they soon change their mind. Mm -hmm. get, what I, I, get what I want. I like clients yeah. who know what they want. I mean, it, that's, that, my, my dream client is somebody who knows what they want because um, I, I, I think both there's, a, nice. there's a conversation to be had then. Mm. You know, but you then they've probably seen somebody else's and then you're copying. You know, oh, I want them down every as a red, red drawing. Yeah, like, I just see this room by Nicky Hasler. Oh, really <laughs> <laughs> well, there's got to be a lot of that where people come with tear sheets is from magazines yeah. and things. And, and it's quite useful to get people to, it, it's easier for people to describe what they want in mm -hmm. pictures than words, in a way. So yeah. there's no harm in no, saying, a, a long just, dialogue. you know. It's very intimate, your work. With people, if then. Take drugs, it helps too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we've all been there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. It, it, we, we get to be a member of the family, 
in yeah. your in you your know, mind. A lot of my friends are my closest. A lot of my clients, my closest friends. Yeah, uh, literally. Uh, and Ben, it was interesting what you mentioned about the, uh, uh, some uh, gender issue, gender, uh, the, well, the wife. Same. But I remember um, one of the problems that we this used to come up in, at when we worked together at House and Garden. We'd be handed scouting pictures, and the generally it was husband, often the, the wife, business people, they, they hadn't really been to a nice house yet. Um, they wanted to have a nice house, but where they had been was the four, they were traveling a lot to the Four Seasons hotels, which all looked alike. Yeah. And they'd come back and there would be a decorator invited over yeah. to, for a meeting and you would be hand told so they, they would let it look like the Four Seasons Hotel. Well, these days you get told that we, we really like Soho House. You know, oh, we yeah. really want to look like Soho House. Well, okay. I'll just bought a big house in Notting Hill or in, um, you know, the Cotswolds. And then what you do? Isn't that bad taste, though? Or no, it's just no taste? That's insipid taste. Insipid taste. Yeah. What are some of your favorite rooms in the world? Nikki, what's your, do you have a favorite? Does something pop to mind when I say that? Um, I suppose the blue room at the Amalienburg. Mm. Blue and silver room. Wow. Yeah. In the end, it's the most extraordinary room I've ever seen. Uh, the, the, the hall at, at um, Pavlovsk, the pink hall with the white plasterwork. <laughs> yeah. I know, there's so um, many. Oh, I, I reckon it's... Um, <laughs> Carolina, do you have a face? So many because yeah, I like all the things. Anything yeah. by Jasper Conrad. Yeah, anything by Jasper Conrad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, he's in the back. Jasper's here. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Oh, anything by Jasper Conrad. He's the most beautiful, most brilliant decorator in the world. You are. <laughs> That's true. Oh. And you bought a hotel in Morocco, I hear. But oh, it's great. Tangier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Even better. Sorting out hotels around the world. Caroline, you don't have a favorite? I mean, uh, I like them all different. I like Elizabethan houses. Same. I like, you know, Vita Sackville West's house. I like Brococo, you know, German palaces. Yeah, it's, I like it's everything. So. I really totally like everything. agree. It's like having a favorite well, anything. West Kellett Longbar is one of the most extraordinary rooms in the world. Which one? West Kennet, that underground Neolithic room in, 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 uh, near you in Dorset, or Wiltshire. It's called West Kennet Longborough. Oh, okay. It's a sort of nave mm. underground with slabs of stone going mm. like that. It's just breathtaking. If you had to pick one, though, like on your desert island, when you get one no, it's disc very, very or one. Because one. I'm schizophrenic and I like, I could one have, house. that's why I'd like to have 50 houses, because I like the Bauhaus. Yeah. I like, um, but what if you had to a, teach a, a monastery and you know? What if you had to teach a class oh. on interior design? Where would you begin? With Ooh. selling this book <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. all. Right. Um, we want to have some questions from the uh, from from you all, and I hope you have some. And I just. Wanted to ask if you had any advice. Um, I read that President and Mrs. Trump will be coming to the United Kingdom in the beginning of June. And I wonder if, if you were to give them a house tour, where you might bring them. Nikki? Oh. <laughs> um, They've already been to Blenheim. I, I think the, the, the Kensington Palace is pretty good. Any American visitor who comes to London, if they're asking me kind of where, where, what, what do we go and see, I always, if you haven't been to the Sony Museum, I think that's probably, or I think he would enjoy yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. As a, as Pitt's a you know, Pitt's Hanger. Mm. He might prefer Pitt's Hanger. Yeah. Who knows? But I think, I, I always just say the Sony Museum. I think it's the best, mm. best house to visit in London. Apparently, he could see himself several times. I don't, know. Yeah. I, don't I mean, you know, I love Ham House. I don't oh, know if you'd yeah. like Ham. it. <laughs> Ham, <beyond laughs> belief, yeah. Isn't it? Oh, everything. Mm, every every dream, corner yeah. of that house. Yeah. Is a He'd dream. probably quite like Hampton Court. Yes. It would, uh, they'd feel at like home. home. In a sense. Yeah. It'd be <coughs> like them. It'd be done by him. Yeah. I don't think he'd notice any of them. I think he'd just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the Versailles Hall of Mirrors, yeah. He'd just be looking at the assistants. We'd love to take a few questions, if anyone has one. I hope you do. Thank you. Um, I'm intrigued by the conversation around taste. I had a sneak peek at the book beforehand and was intrigued to see that there are um, rooms in there that are 100 years old. They were done 100 years ago. Uh, some of them maybe 60, 70 years ago, but look quite contemporary even yeah. today. 
And I wondered if you could tell us who you think is designing like that today. If we were doing this book 100 years from now, whose work would have that sort of lasting impression? Nikki Haslam. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I think several of us. I mean, uh, um, if the room is good, it'll last. They, all, all those people have done, uh, all the people in this room have probably done hideous rooms which haven't lasted. Uh, or somebody's changed it. If the room has stayed as it was originally conceived, then it'll last, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah. over succeeding years, people have pulled things about or added something or knocked down the perfect staircase or whatever. Yeah. And therefore, it's lost its, its full, fully beautiful wholeness. But if they, are, if they are left as intended, they will stay forever. In a sense, although you know, some of the greatest rooms come and go, as we were just saying. But, ooh, T tricky question, you're asking us I to mean, name I mean, names. I mean, Nikki I mean, avoided I mean, that. How many houses have you done that you think were perfect, then the next person buys and they walk, they, and they walk to them and say, all this shit's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, probably, I know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I say it about <laughs> when I'm walking into yeah. this. So, um, I think one of the things which I feel is that just in general terms, I do think that we are structuring buildings better today. Like, just if, not on the fancy level in the book and all of that sort of stuff, but if you go and, um, you know, if you're just looking around a sort of townhouse in London or a house in the country, which, which was given a big renovation in, you know, 30 or 40 years yeah. ago, Sort of what I'm always struck more. by is the sort of poverty of everything that was installed. Like everything's basically. It was the war, darling. Yeah. Well, it was, it was the oh, 1980s, no. but it was sort of still no, that no, sort no, of no. slight <laughs> spirit where, you know, just things were generally kind of a bit shit. And huh. I think that, and maybe it gets back to the good taste there question wasn't we were the talking about. No, exactly. Around. That's yeah. what I mean. Whereas today, you can, like, just there is a general. A high standard, even yeah, things, even yeah. things now, which we perceive to be of exceptional quality. Like there was a definite moment where David Hicks, who's now the sort of you know, you ask any decorator to name their top ten decorators, he'll be sort of kind of number one or number three or number three. It's sort of like David Hicks, David Hicks. But there was a real moment where it was like, Ugh. and um, y you know, you've got to survive a certain amount of time, and then you're fine. And that's true of buildings as well. Like he was always pretty bad upstairs, David Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nicky. The, bed, the, the bedrooms aren't great. Downstairs, he was wonderful. No. <laughs> He'd run out and of he energy put, in the bedroom. Worst thing, all the baths in the middle of the room. Yes, he loved oh. that. <laughs> yeah. 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 The most unsettling, uncomfortable thing in the world is the bath in the middle of the room. Still your question properly. Oh, did you say the bath in the middle of the room is the most uncomfortable, unsettling. You're worried you can't, you know, somebody might be behind you, you can't oh, put yeah, things down. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah. People say they want to look at the view. How often look at the view when you're in the bath? I hope. No, no, you, not if you're, particularly if you're shaving. You don't want to do that. <coughs> Question. Well, sometimes it starts with one room and some it ends with a full house, sometimes it's the full house right from the word go. Do you ever go in with a kind of move the whole house or do you go room by room? Kind of well, I think room, I, I'm sure you'll agree, rooms have to flow into a, 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 having a different room, a different feeling in each room is fatal. Yeah. What I, I, I think you can't, you, if you're trying to think about too much in one go, then your brain, brain will blow up. So mm -hmm. I'd sort of always, but you, you can set a, a broad theme. You can understand themes for the whole house, and that will be led by the house and by the people, the by, the, by the owners, Nancy, and the atmosphere that they're... Nancy that Lancaster painted one room pink and one room blue. And people said, how did you do that? And she said, it's the color of the air between the rooms that matters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how great. How great. Um, just let me ask my wonderful panelists, if there was anything that we haven't discussed that you would you would like to discuss before before you are relieved of this obligation? No, I think you've covered it very well, really. All right. Covered it. Yeah, Carolina. Well done, though. All right. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you.